Hello and welcome to another edition of A. Vogel's Menopause Mondays and today I'm going to be talking about bone health. Now I had a, an email from a lady called Jean who said that she has osteopenia and she's had this for a number of years. Now osteopenia is when the bones start to get weaker and she was really worried because she already had this condition that during the menopause this was actually then going to turn into full-blown osteoporosis. Now osteoporosis is when too much calcium gets taken from the bones, the bones become weaker and then they fracture very easily. So you may only just trip up, fall down, put your hand out, you can break your wrist um, and there could be lots of other types of fractures as well. And we do know that in the menopause falling oestrogen can actually have quite a profound effect on bone health. But interestingly enough, and I was doing a little bit of research uh, about this just over the last week, that in the last year in the UK alone, there were over 60,000 hip fracture accidents. And of those 60,000, 80% of those were for women over 50. So it's really vital that we actually look after our bones as well as we can during the menopause to stop us ending up as, as one of those awful statistics. Now the problem is we know falling oestrogen can affect the bones but there is a range of other things as well that can actually contribute to this and I want to go through these as well because they are quite important. First of all we're busy aren't we? We're busy people, It's we don't have time for recreation and one of the most important recreation things that we can do is to get out into the fresh air and to get out into the sunlight. Sunlight when it hits the skin will actually produce vitamin D for you. Problem is if we're busy, if we don't get out then our levels of vitamin D can actually drop and if you're like me, um, you know, I, I live in Scotland and in the winter we get very little um, sunshine anyway and so uh, levels of vitamin D can actually be, um, you know, quite common nowadays. We've also got weight gain. This is a, a common symptom in, in the menopause. We also don't have time to exercise as well. You know, we're too busy. Um, we don't want to go home at night and have to run around the streets or, or, or go down the gym. We can be very fatigued. We can have achy joints as well and, and it can be very difficult just to get motivated to get exercise as well. But exercise is absolutely vital. What we call weight bearing exercise, which means that you have to keep putting your feet on the ground. Um, that can be really effective for helping to keep your bones nice and strong. As we get older our digestion can weaken and we need lots of calcium and magnesium in our diet for healthy bones and very often our um, stomach becomes a, a little bit weaker, we produce less acid and we need a good deal of stomach acid in order to break down and make a accessible all the calcium and the magnesium in our diet as well. We've also got poor diets, you know, we, again we're busy people, Do we, are we eating the right things to give us things like magnesium and calcium in, in our daily diet. We've also got stress, we've got a lot of stress, stress of the menopause itself and stress with, with everything that's going around us on a daily basis. And stress creates acidic chemicals and these acidic chemicals can affect our bones as well. So what can we do as individuals to actually look after our bones at this particular time? Well, first of all, good diet. And what do I mean by a good diet? Well, I mean lots and lots of foods that are rich in magnesium and calcium. So that would be things like your, your nuts and seeds and your dried fruits. And these make great snacks in the menopause instead of chocolate biscuits or, or sweets. And the dried fruit and nuts have got good oils in them as well, which are, are good, for the, the, good for the joints. We need to look at our dark green leafy vegetables. We need to look at a, a good variety of fruits, of good grains, good healthy grains, pulses, 
um, and beans as well can be, can be high in, in things like calcium and magnesium. We've also got sardines, you know this is such a basic food but it's, it's a great menopause food because the very soft bones are rich in calcium and there's also lots of those lovely fish oils which is great for your memory and great for, for your joints as well. So have a look at your diet, see if there's any way that you can actually help to improve your diet as, as well. I'm often asked, is dairy good for the bones? Unfortunately, not really, not if you take too much. Dairy is high in calcium, but it's very low in magnesium, and you need a nice balance of the two in order for them to be effective for bone health. So don't give up dairy. A little bit can be really beneficial for you in the menopause, but don't go overboard as well. Now, if you have any stomach problems, then it's really important to get these addressed as well because poor stomach function can affect the absorption of calcium and magnesium and that's very important as well. So just check that your digestion is, is working well. We need to look at our vitamin D levels. Where are we going to get vitamin D from? And in the UK especially, there, there is um, quite a low vitamin D epidemic going on, especially in the older generations as well. So this is something that we need to look at very, very carefully. What I would suggest is that all premenopausal, menopausal and postmenopausal women, if you haven't done it already, go and ask your doctor to get tested for vitamin D just to make sure that your levels are not too low. And we don't want to be taking supplements if you don't actually need them. Now, the best way to get vitamin D is a daily dose of the sun. But as I said, for most of us, that's not always possible. So taking supplements can be quite a, a good idea. If you need to take supplements, then you could look at something called vitamin D3, which is one of the best absorbed forms of vitamin D. Or you can also look at sublingual sprays. You just take a couple of sprays on a daily basis and that can help to top up your vitamin D levels. We do need to watch our weight. We need to keep that under control for bone health and joint health as well. And the other thing, as I said before, that's really important is weight bearing exercise. And this needs to be done regularly. It's not something that you can just do occasionally. It needs to be done every day or at least maybe three to four times a week. Now, you may well be asking, what's the best exercises for this? For those of you in the UK who saw that program um, the other week on how to stay young, they actually found that the best exercise for keeping older people healthy on all levels was dancing. So, if you can join a dance class, if you enjoy dancing on a regular basis, this is a really good exercise to do. The other one can be walking either power walking or just a good brisk walk. Try to get up to half an hour a day because that's really the, uh, the least amount that's going to help to get the bones going nice and healthy. You can look at things like trampolining, bouncing on a trampoline, you can do skipping as well, but apparently you've got to do these for at least half hour to, to get any real benefit as well. I have been asked about cycling and yoga. These will not really help with bone health, but if you do them, don't give them up because cycling is a fabulous exercise for keeping your muscles strong and it's wonderful for the heart and keeping your heart healthy and strong as you go through the menopause is very very important. Yoga is great for flexibility, it's really good for muscle tone and these are important things as you go through the menopause and yoga is really good for balance because one of the problems with a lot of women who get hip fractures is the fact that they lose their balance and fall. So doing some kind of regular balancing exercises will actually prevent these things happening as, as you get older and older. So this is really, really important. I've actually got one of these. It's like a ball with a platform halfway along it and you just stand on it and try and, and gain your balance. And it's actually really difficult, but I try and do that for two or three minutes a day. Or you can actually if you're standing waiting for the bus and you don't mind looking a little bit silly is just standing on one foot and count to 30 and then try and balance on the other foot or you can do that you know I, I do it sometimes when 
them at the photocopier wait, waiting for the, the printing to start. So balancing exercise is very important for later on uh, preventing falls that can then lead to things like hip fractures and lip, uh, wrist fractures as well. We need to reduce our stress levels and this is very important for those of you who've been watching for quite a while now, you know that stress creates a whole range of menopausal problems. So, you know, this is another excuse. I'm going to relax for half an hour to look after my bones. So make sure you get that relaxation um, done as well. One of the things we need to look at possibly is taking a calcium and magnesium supplement. Now you may be asking, why do we need magnesium for calcium? It's very important. Calcium and magnesium, they work in harmony with each other in the body. And if you just take lots of calcium, it gets lost in the body, it doesn't know where to go. Magnesium is like the bus that takes calcium to your bones. So you need the magnesium in order to make sure that the, magnesi the calcium gets to where it's needed and doesn't actually get lost anywhere else. So getting a good um, calcium and magnesium supplement to add to your diet can be really beneficial. You can look at capsules. I tend not to go with tablets purely because they tend to be very hard and they don't break down if, and if your stomach's a bit weak you might not actually get a lot of benefit. So things like capsules, you can get calcium and magnesium powders now as well, you can get them in drink forms. So anything like that would be a good addition to your daily diet as well. We also have a lovely little remedy called urticalcin, which helps with the absorption of calcium as well. And some women find that can be really beneficial at helping with bone health. And we also recommend it for your hair and your nails as well. The other thing you can look at, if it's appropriate for your situation, is a phytoestrogen supplement. These are plant estrogens that help to just very gently raise your estrogen levels so that can help with your bone health as well. We have our wonderful menopause support or you could look at herbs like black cohosh and red clover as well. Now I get a, a number of women asking if HRT would be all right for bone health. Now, if you are taking HRT, and a lot of women who've maybe had an early menopause or you've had a, a hysterectomy will very often be recommended to take HRT to protect your bones. And it will protect your bones as you are taking it. But research seems to indicate that within two years of coming off HRT, you lose any of the benefit that it gave beforehand. Plus, if you have not made an effort to look after your bones whilst you've actually been taking the HRT, then you can end up with bone problems later, later on. So all I would say in these situations is that if your doctor advises you to take HRT for your bones, is that you ask them how long you have to stay on the HRT for, what happens when you come off HRT and is there anything else you can do to look after your bones and you can follow this little plan as well if you like just to help to minimize any problems later on. So I hope that's given you a little bit of food for thought and has made you realize just how important it is not just for the here and now as we're going through the menopause but if we're going to have a healthy old age if we're going to be mobile in our 70s and 80s and, and not end up with lots of fractures that just how important looking after our bones are homework for this week i think maybe try and do some kind of weight bearing exercise if you can and let me know how you get on so I'm looking forward to you next time um, when we'll have more subjects on A. Vogel's Menopause Mondays.